Hello! This week, uh, the Doctors Bjorkman are on vacation, but we wanted to take a minute and connect with you guys. We thought it'd be fun to do like a small batch Q&A. And then the questions you all had were really awesome. Yeah. And so we're going to answer a few tonight and then save that um, thread to come back to next week because just so many good things, mm -hmm. things we'd love to chat with you all about um, and think that other parents um, and people taking care of kiddos would like to learn about that stuff as well. So. Absolutely. We are shooting, you may notice, in nature tonight. <laughs> we're racing against our natural lighting that yes. we're using. Um, kiddos are in bed. So again, short batch this week and hopefully a couple more questions next week. If you haven't met us before, I'm Kurt. I'm a board-certified pediatrician. I'm Sarah. I'm a board-certified OBGYN. And, and we, we are, are the, the Doctors Bjorkman. Let's get to some of these great questions. Yeah, pulling them up on my phone here. Let's start with, oh, this is a fun one. This is from at Amy VVVVV says, what differences or similarities surprised you between your two newborns or parenting experiences? Whew. They were so different. Gosh, I will say like we, you guys saw us go through pregnancy number one and then yes. we shared some of our journey with baby number one and like, we felt like we had a pretty hard time. Cease was our, yes, our first was. Was a very spirited baby. Now is a very spirited toddler. Yep. Um, and we're like, man, we learned so much. The second time is going to be so much easier. Right. We like have all these skills and techniques. Yeah. Um, and nothing works for the second one. Like he was just hard in a different way than she was. Like, yeah. And I think maybe we got good at the things that were hard the first time. And But he's definitely different. He's They're just totally different. They're just hard in different ways. Um, and like Cease personality as a baby is the personality she is now um and Bo seems like he's gonna be a sweetie a sweetie he's I think. very much a sweetheart but they're both very sweet just yes. in very different ways yeah i think it's amazing no matter like how old they are or which one it is just every day find ways to humble you as a parent um and like we like have a ton of medical training and it helps with something it's like we had a butt rash last week i'm like oh like Let's do these supportive things, then it didn't get better. We can go get some clotrimazole for it. It's very easy, and some of those things are nice from our medical training, but at the end of the day... We like, don't know what we're doing. Parenting is still tough, and every kid is different. They're different, and I think that has helped me just remembering, hey, they're different kids, and the things that maybe worked for her don't work for him, and so be ready to adjust. Like, it turns out she was a super sleeper, and Bowie has sucked at sleeping. Yes. So it's just, it's a different flavor of hard with each one but you know we love them so yes be prepared for it to be very different yeah uh, but it's fun yeah let's see other questions i did love this in this comment section a few people you know think that sees our first is kurt's like mini mm -hmm. very true but i was hearing some everybody thinks that Bo maybe looks like me a little bit which has been fun because you know i did all the work so finally to have a kiddo that looks like me was nice yeah, um, maybe this is a good one for you at um a line barnhart one two four eight said how long is recommended to wait in between pregnancies i have a five month old and we are planning to start for number two once our son turns a year or so we have a whole video on this um the risks and some different things to think about when considering your next pregnancy we'll link that here um generally the studies have shown that you kind of minimize as much risk as possible by waiting at least six months. Um, to get pregnant the second. Correct. It seems like 12 months is kind of that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. um, if you can wait that long, it's 18 months is kind of recommended by ACOG after a C-section. So your uterus has time to heal, but there are a lot of things to consider. How big do you want your family to be? How old are you? Did you have a C-section? All those different things. Yeah. Um, so check out our video. We'll link it here for you with, I think we went through a lot of that information too. Yes. The, the rest of that question too is, do we enjoy our current age gap? And we had some other people asking us about like what the perfect age gap is. What is your answer for this? Do I enjoy it? Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes I will say, it sucks tremendously. We had, I took our, our little daughter, daughter who's almost two and a half down to wake up her brother who's now mm -hmm. um, six months old and like she like cr climbed in the crib with him today and just like you get these really adorable cute moments. Mm -hmm. I can like strap bow on and then take cease and toe and so like in that way it's sometimes it's easy but also. She also bit his ear while today. they were both sitting on Kurt's lap like <laughs> eating lunch so hey. Um, it's not I, all roses. It was super super hard when 
Bo was born and see she's like 22 months old or whatever yeah. she was. Um, cause like, he was just like a potato that couldn't do anything and yeah. super high needs and Cease was super high needs. I honestly think any age gap has challenges, has challenges. and it also depends on your kid. Yes. Like Cease is so was, spirited and needs so much. Yeah. Cease was a two person job from the moment she was born and that has like continued. And so that has been its own struggle in that like, He's also firmly too in a lot of work. Um, and so I think we like it. The thing that keeps us pushing is I think when Bo's like one and toddling around and they can play together, I think I'm going to be able to say like, yes, we love this. The suck was like worth it. Um, right now we're in the like super hard phase. Um, and it's getting we love better. Them. It is getting so much it's better. And all of you said that to me at one of our update videos when we were really going through yeah. it. Everybody was like, the first six months is so hard. Yeah. Hang in there. It gets better right around that six month mark. Things start to improve. And that was very true. Yes. Um, it, it's like, oh, this is kind of fun. Bowie's kind of fun. Like it around the six month, four or five months, I started like see a light, mm -hmm. like they're a light. And then now we're like six, six and a half months. And it's like, oh, this is kind of fun sometimes. Yeah. Um, he was very fussy too, I think with the challenge too. Yeah. And so he's getting better with his reflux and things like that. That is maybe helping. I will say like one thing that has helped. Someone said to us once upon a time, like no matter what's going on with your kids, like it's going to change. And so even in those really hard stretches, like it is temporary yes. and things are going to change. Yes. But also when things are going really well and you think you're great parents for that moment, um, it's they will change too. too and their, their sleep schedule will change or whatever. And right. they're like, oh, we don't have this down. Yes. No, but it's hard. We love them. Yeah. I don't love every minute of it and that's okay. And so if you are also in the thick of it and like not loving every minute of it, that is okay. Um, and you love them and they're great. So, all right. Another quick question I just wanted to answer says, Erica J. Travis said, ways to improve AMH, TTC with low AMH. So anti-malarian hormone is what AMH stands for. It um, is a so, blood test that we check that gives us an idea of your ovarian reserve or how many eggs you have left, like a high, low average amount. Okay. It's not an exact number. Just gives us this idea of what's left in your ovarian bank account. The thing about AMH is it is, there is nothing you can do to improve it. This is a, your ovarian reserve just decreases as we age. Um, that slope of how fast it decreases is different for every woman. And we don't know what slope everyone is on. Um, the thing that studies have repeatedly shown us is that AMH is not predictive of live birth or ability to get pregnant. So in terms of tips for trying to conceive with a low AMH, you can check out our video on get pregnant fast. The, all of those apply to you, um, to anyone, even someone with low AMH is just like, no, be reassured that just because your AMH is low doesn't mean it's, you can't get pregnant. And remember that if it has been more than 12 months of trying to conceive. If you're under 35 um, and you haven't, it's time to go see your fertility doctor or OBGYN. If you are 35 or older and it's been six months of trying to conceive, um, go see an OBGYN. If you aren't having regular periods, don't wait. Do not wait <laughs> to go see your OBGYN. So no go time now. limit. Go. If yep. you're not having regular periods and not getting pregnant. Okay. Or some other. We have a whole video on infertility we can link to um, that kind of goes over that in more depth. But. Awesome. Next one. This is from Sharzi8728. She says, how can I change sleep schedule of a two-week-old from night to day quick? Um, so this happens all the time. Your baby is born and they come out and they think that nighttime is the time to party and daytime is the time to sleep. And it's wonderful because they're so cute and you just want to hold them. Yes. But you, they need to transition. Oh, um, nice. I remember this was especially the case for Cece, our first. Like she was just there to party every night from midnight to 6 a.m. And then like would sleep all day. Four hours just snuggling her during the day yeah. and we and, didn't know any better. Yeah, And you're just so happy. You're like, oh, I'm so tired. I just want right. my baby to sleep. And you're happy. They're in your arms and they're cute. Um, the biggest thing to help this, two things. One is exposing them to the bright light during the daytime. Get outside in Get the outside, morning. Fresh air. All of those things are just 
help the natural body's cues to know, hey, it's daytime. They've been in the womb for nine months and now they need to learn, oh, there is a 24 hour cycle. The other big thing is while those daytime naps are great and you love just holding them. So much and keep limit, doing it. Keep, yeah, let them sleep during yes. the day, but also don't let them sleep too long. It's good to think about kind of that wake window cycle and that baby when they're a newborn they're going to be awake for about 45 minutes yeah. but like keep them awake do things feed them and naps that last 20 minutes or two hours are both totally, totally normal fine. for newborns but you can do these things you know making sure you're waking them up every two to three hours yeah, for feed. reasons a to get them some awake time during the day b to fill up their little bellies during the day you want to fill that gas tank up during the day so they don't want to eat as much as night at night um and at two weeks this is normal. They, yeah. Their circadian rhythms are starting to develop. And even as you get to that four-week mark, they are just going to be doing this better on their own. So yeah. you try to support them as much as you can. Yeah. And the thing that with, is true with so many parenting things is just a little bit more time. time. Yeah. Feed yeah. them lots during the day, lots of bright light, and limit daytime naps. Let them sleep at night. Okay. What's next? Um, I have our baby is showing... So oh, this was... Kalina Vu. We apologize for any yeah. names. We're right. Or are wrong. these nicknames or I don't know. But um, our baby is showing signs of rolling over. So we need to stop swaddling her. Are there any trans transitional swaddles that you recommend? Oh, I remember dropping the swaddle. Both of my kids just loved being swaddled. We and loved. Slept so great in their swaddles. Yeah. So making that transition was very challenging. With Cease, we tried to like have one arm in. Um, at a time we tried the Merlin sleep suit. We tried, what that else was that we the weighted try? one? Uh, no, that was, it's like a marshmallow suit. Okay. We tried one. a couple different yeah. transitions and we ended up with the zippity zip. Mm -hmm. They look like these little flying squirrels cause their hands kind of go in it. It's pretty cute. I think you can get it on Amazon. Um, and it sort of limits them. And that was helpful. I it was helpful. We used that for both of our kids. That was what we ended up using yep. was the zippy zip, zip mm -hmm. after trying many other different transitional sleep sacks. Yep. Um, and it, it's easy. It's, it's not super expensive and it yep. worked fine. And it's very safe yep. on all aspects. It's like the AAP doesn't recommend the weighted swaddles. I know a lot of people like those like dream, yep. whatever. Or any, any swaddles really after... You know, right. definitely the thing is safe sleep is important. They're on their backs. We did use the always swaddle for both of our kiddos when they were newborns, but yeah. it's absolutely important that as soon as they're able to start rolling, yeah. get them out of that swaddle, which was kind of a sad time it for is. us because they slept so well in yeah, the swaddle it was, it was tough. and the transition is tricky, um, but they figured out, yeah. um, there is a, they, there is a little bit of, there's some more extra tears. Um, but yeah, so Sparks notes, we really like the zippity zip and we yeah. have a whole video on baby sleep if you want to check it out. Yeah, and some swaddling videos too if you go back and look. So we're probably going to run out of light soon. We're going to shoot, answer more questions, maybe talk about like helping infant mobility and babies who aren't connecting sleep cycles during the daytime naps yet next week for sure and a bunch of other questions. Um, thought there was one more that got a bunch of likes and comments on just to address this week. Yeah. This is from at MS Corinne King. Um, she says... Miss Corinne King Miss, maybe. Oh, <laughs> yes. Great. This is wonderful. Uh, they say, how can dad support breastfeeding moms specifically with middle of night feeds? Um, so we did this breastfed both of our kiddos. Maybe I'll say what I think was a good answer and you can tell me how I did. Um, I will say for our first, um, I was probably more engaged in like the breastfeeding. I felt like every time you were breastfeeding, I wanted to be awake with you. And so like I'd get up and I'd like read to you while you were breastfeeding, at least for the first month, um, during those middle of the night feeds. Um, I didn't do that with the second one and was not as supportive for those middle of the night feeds. I will say something that I think I did well for both kiddos was, you know, I can't breastfeed. I'm useless nipples. Useless nipples. Yeah. Useless nipples. Um, and I realized that is a huge burden. So I like try to do as much of the other things that I can to be supportive. So changing as many of diapers as I can. Like I remember like first couple of weeks trying to get them all changed by myself and then like cooking and cleaning and like making sure you are fed and you are hydrated as mom because those are things that you forgot to do frequently and so those are the things that I tried to do how did I do I so see you, you are incredibly supportive and all wonderful specifically about the middle of the night things that there's kind of two philosophies one philosophy is like hey I have to be up breastfeeding the baby anyway you should sleep 
they're that's and if that is what works for or you, maybe needed that's for fine. some people. Right, yeah. right. That's really great. Um with both of them the thing like when the baby would cry to wake up, Kurt would go and get the baby, mm-hmm. bring the baby to me, and then I would breastfeed the baby. I'd usually feed one side, Kurt would change the diaper, feed the other side, and then we'd put the baby back to bed. And I think often Kurt would take at least sees would take her and kind of get her back to sleep because she often yeah. needed some rocking or soothing to go back to sleep. Um, the reason why breastfeeding is so hard is because it's really hard for mom to like get a break because even mm-hmm. every time the baby is eating, mom has to be doing something. Even if you pump and so your partner's giving the baby a bottle, if baby's eating, especially when you are working to establish that supply at the beginning, you need to pump. And so when you're breastfeeding, you know, if you're formula feeding, you know, in theory, your partner can give baby a bottle at midnight and then you could do the 3 a.m. bottle and you could get a stretch. But with breastfeeding, you just can't. And so you're just literally on for every single feed for that baby for months. And it's really hard. And so I know it really helped me to for Kurt to, he'd just get the baby, bring her to me, I'd feed her, I'd give it back to him, and then he'd often get her back to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was super helpful. And then obviously the other things during the day were very helpful, but it's very much, I always appreciated the team. <laughs> like I wasn't suffering alone. Yeah. Um, and so that was nice and helpful, I yeah. think was the biggest thing. Yeah. Some other things, some people I think mentioned in terms of like dad giving baby a bottle and that was something yeah. that I just enjoyed and for kind of all of both of our kiddos early infancy, like we do one bottle a day of yeah. pumped breast milk, which was, as you mentioned, not really a break because you were still having to pump while I was feeding, yeah. but allowed kind of me some extra connection time with baby that I really liked. That was something nice that you did for me. Right. Um, and then it also like set us up easy for a transition. Um, two kind of more bottle feeds with pump breast milk later. I will say we had lots of challenges with baby number two in terms of nipple confusion where like sometimes like he loved the breast but hated the bottle and then he loved the bottle and hated the breast. It was a trip. A lot of (laughs) that. And this is just like the whole thing. Not everyone's breastfeeding struggles are the same, but everyone has them even from baby number one to baby number two. Cease was so hard. She wouldn't latch. I thought my nipples were going to fall off. It was so, so, so hard. And then Bo was just a whole different set of problems. And like, you just, it's just a different flavor of hard. And so, you know, it's struggle together if you can. That is my tip. Um, Yeah. Because it just, it's exhausting. And so if you have some help in doing that, that's great. But do whatever works for you and continue, continually assess that and talk about that with your partner because it may change um, as that goes on. What is working for you? Yep. What's working for your partner? What the baby needs? Um, I think it was different with Bo because, you know, we'd kind of, you'd hand him to me, he'd eat, he'd go right back to sleep. So it was just a little different in terms of, he, he did get up. It just was not for as long as yeah. the cease because number two is just a different kid um so communicate your needs change all the time on what you need and what baby needs and your partner needs and so just continually check in and see how everybody's doing and how you can help each other better um and that will set you up for success with parenting in general it's a team sport and uh it's, it is, I am thankful to have a helpful partner and just mad, mad respect to those who are single parenting yeah. and I doing think it. almost every day I ask you, I don't know how people do I don't, this alone. it's like super humans and yeah. just, you know, I know sometimes it's by choice and sometimes it's not, but there are amazing, strong people out there and, um, we hope that some of this helps you all. Yeah. Um, like we said, there are so many great questions yeah, that we didn't we'll get to. Yeah, we'll be getting to more. We're going to try to get to more for you guys next week. Um, thanks for joining us. See you next week. Bye. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.